Hey guys, so I wanted to bring you one more um, zombie doll mov uh, movie video. Um, if you've been following me on social media, you know I've been making the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. So this is Conquest, this is Famine or Pestilence, and this is War. And I'm working on the last one, which is Death. Um, each one has um, the horse and rider um, according to mythology and I, I was raised Roman Catholic so I'm using the Roman Catholic version of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, just FYI. So Conquest was on a white horse and he's carrying a bow and arrow and wearing a crown. Um, famine or Pestilence, again depending on which version you read is on a black horse and carrying scales. I kind of like the idea of him being a combination of both, so he's also covered in flies. You know, famine, pestilence, death, yeah. Um, and then war is on a red horse and he carries a sword. So, um, and then for death, my notes say, um, a pale green horse and then, um, I'm going to put him with a black cloak and a Sith. Yeah, I've already made the prop. I'm going to use some of this creepy cloth, Halloween cloth, for his cloak. And um, I've made the horse and riders the same color. I also printed um, a description of what I've done and why I've done it onto some printer. This is some June Taylor um, uh, printer fabric, inkjet printer fabric. It's uh, on a adhesive paper sheet and it's meant to run through your printer. It's water resistant um, and I've done these in response to the worldwide pandemic and situation in 20, here in 2020. Um, it's just my way of, you know, tongue-in-cheek working through the stress. And um, I've named each... Um, oh, see this one is wrong. Oh, cold, cold, cold. Yep. So look, that's wrong. It should say death. I forgot to edit. So I'm gonna have to cross that out and write death in. No, oh, that'll be a funny thing. Anyway, um, so I've named the, um, which one it is in each one of the descriptions. Again, this one's wrong, so I won't have to change that, but won't worry about it right now. Anyway, I wanted to show you this first part. So on all of these kind of dolls, you use my uh, pad. I've been using the pattern I have in my Etsy shop. It's a PDF download. It's a number of pages and I include um, um, materials used, um, directions, pictures of some um, dolls that I've made as part of this pattern, um, and some dolls I made, um, art, felt art dolls I made prior to this. Um, I used to make a lot of these, and I include the patterns for the art dolls. I also use the same pattern to create the doll body, just the base, and then paint the face and features on and made a doll out of that. Um, so I've included all of those different pattern pieces, including some stitching guides and the rib guides for the ribs for the, both the horse and the um, figures. And I cut all my pattern pieces out of some kind of cardstock or something so I can have them handy for the ribs. I made sort of a little template that I lay down on the felt and then I trace around and then I cut the pieces out, which you see for the horse down here. <clears throat> so you, you get all of these different patterns, including the skull, a blood drop, the original felt. It's just because I'm on camera now, I'm having trouble. Original felt doll body patterns, including wings if you want to make an angel one. There's a long video on how to do the basic dolls here on YouTube already. I have added the pattern for the horse to the back, which includes the body, the mane, the tail, the ears, and all the skeleton pieces. And again, for both the horse ribs and the figure ribs, I've just created a little template out of this part, and then I lay it over the fabric and trace it and then cut it. I realized as I was making the last one of these dolls that when I did the original instruction video, which I'll link in the description below, I don't think I did the skeleton on there. So I wanted to show you how I did that. So I cut all the little bones out and then I use either a sew line fabric basing glue stick or you can use Elmer's washable school glue to baste 
your skeleton pieces onto your body. And that's kind of the part for the moment that I wanted to show you how to do today. So once you have them all fussy cut out, put your mane and your tail and your ears aside. And the procedure is the same even for the person skeleton as it is for the horse. So I usually kind of lay them out roughly where I want them. And then put a little bit of the glue on the back. And then stick it down. And it sticks it down just good enough to hold it there for when you do the stitching because we are going to stitch them down. This is just temporary to hold them in place. Bone, skeleton, whatever you want to call it. And just put a little glue on the back. These are to symbolize this, of course, the backbone, the spine. Oops. And just get them all. I already did the, this one, but I did it the same way, too. Now again, these are temporarily stuck down. So if you don't like where they are, or don't like, like for instance, that looks like a really big, I think it's a little too big, so I'm going to give it a trim. There we go. And um, then you're all ready to stitch the bones on, okay? So we'll be doing that next. I'll be back. Okay, once you get everything basted, then it's time to sew the bones down. Um, just like with other doll projects that I do, I like to get all of the decorations done on the front of the doll before I assemble said doll. I do all the uh, different doll things that I do that way for the most part. I'm going to separate my six strand embroidery floss into three and three. I like a long, thin, large eyed embroidery needle. For the most part, um, I like the what is it? Shishiko needle? Ah, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a Japanese needle. I don't think this is actually one of them. I think, I think that's one of them. But this one is very similar. It's a little bit longer. So you just use what you like, but I like a very sharp but very long needle. It's easier for me to hold. So I'm going to take just the front half of the doll where the bones are basted and let's zoom in just a little bit. Lighting is a little weird today, but you know, it's the apocalypse. So I'm going to start from the bottom and I've tied a knot in the end of the embroidery floss. I'm going to come up right there, right there. I'm going to go out straight across from there in the green and just do a little tacking stitch. You see that? I'm going to do those all the way around the outside, all the way around the eyeballs, all the way around the ribs, the center bones, the arm bones, the leg bones, all of it.
So once you're done, you're gonna see how you're gonna have it all stitched on around here and the ribs and the leg bones on him. I added an eyeball over it as after I was done. The plastic eye is glued on with E6000 and then I stitched on an eyelid. Um, this one, Conquest, has it without. So I'm gonna get the bones stitched on on the person, the rider and the horse. Just the bones. They're, they're sewn on the same way. And then I'll be back. Okay guys, we are here. We're gonna continue working on <clears throat> the last of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which is death. It is the next day from when we started. And I am trying to get used to um, going back to filming with my video camera and not my telephone, which for whatever reason I started doing at the beginning of 2020 and the crazy things that started happening. Anyway, um, <laughs> hopefully I wasn't out of frame too much with some of the prior clips, but just in case, just to review. <laughs> um, and if I was, please forgive me. Um, I will try to show you the blanket stitch when we start doing the assembly, again, just in case. But to review, we attached all the bone pieces to the front of our person, our rider, and our horse. We just did simple, straight tacking stitches around all the little pieces of felt bone after we had cut, not only cut them out, but um, basted them to the felt body piece with some Elmer's washable school glue, which is a good alternative if you can't find or can't get the sew line um, basting glue stick. And this is intended for sewing projects, but Elmer's washable school glue will work too, and that's more easy to find and probably a little cheaper. So we used some cream colored, ecru colored DMC floss to attach all the bones to our body pieces. And we did that yesterday. Then I took um, two pieces of the tail pattern for the horse and I blanket stitched around the edge of the piece, leaving a little bit of an opening here. And I stuffed a little bit of polyfill inside there before I completed sewing it shut. Then I did something similar to the mane. This is the main piece that goes on his head. And as I was sewing it shut here at the bottom, I attached the two ears of the horse. So now we're ready to put our figure pieces both together. I went out this morning and got some more floss because I was out of this. I didn't, this is all this green color that I have and I needed a little more. So. We are going to um, put our pieces together. I'm gonna to use all six strands of this DMC floss. Now, the felt that I'm using is from a Etsy shop called Benzie Designs, and they have a wool blend felt. I do prefer to work with wool felt. I like the way it feels and handles and stitches better than acrylic felt. That being said, you can use acrylic felt. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but Benzi has some great colors and they have this very pale color green that's pistachio. And this color for the bones that I'm using on this one I think is called parchment. Um, I found this DMC floss which is almost an exact match to the green and the pistachio felt. And this is color 3348. Okay, so we're gonna start with the person. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna match up the pieces here as best I can. Now, I like to leave a space, usually what I'm doing is I leave a space up here at the head. So I usually start <clears throat> somewhere here. And I've tied a knot at the end of my embroidery floss. I'm gonna come up between the two layers of felt, about a quarter inch or so away from the edge, and pull which will hide that knot in between the layers. Then I'm gonna go around to the back, second layer, and go through the second layer and the top layer and come out that same place where the thread went in that first time. And then just pull, okay? 
you'll have this kind of little loop here. And then I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch away and go up from the back through both layers of felt Before I pull it all the way tight, I'm going to put the needle underneath that loop and that'll make this little bar here that's diagonal. <clears throat> when we get to the end, we're going to pull on this and we're going to make it flat like that. So <clears throat> pull it um, tight, pull it taut but not tight. When you're doing these blanket stitches, you're going to be stuffing the doll and it'll put a lot of strain on the doll if you pull your stitches too tight. So again, we're going to go about a quarter of an inch away up from the bottom through both layers. We're going to put the needle through the loop before you pull it tight. And it's going to make this like bar around the edge of the doll. Just like we did with the mane and tail pieces, we're going to go all the way around the doll and I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going to stop about here and then stuff the doll and then sew it closed. So I'll be back when I get to about here. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to stuff the doll. And I use this kind of fluffy um, stuffing that's like crumbly and I prefer this this particular kind of stuffing. I don't re ever remember what the name of it is, but yeah, I prefer this kind. But anyway, um, I'm gonna stuff it, and I usually do all the extremities first and then work my way back up towards the head. I just find that's easier. Take the needle off so I don't jab myself. and just push it all down. I do have this this stick. This was in my grandmother's sewing box. I gotta think it's some kind of lace making thing. I don't know what it is, but anyway, it works good for stuffing dolls. Let's see, if you have these stitches pulled too tight, then the bars of the blanket stitch end up like too far towards the back or the front and they're a little wonky. So that's why you don't wanna pull your blanket stitches too tight. Then when you stuff it, it gets all weird. So I'm going to get him all stuffed and then we'll be back when it's time to sew him together. Okay, he's all stuffed. So now we need to sew his head closed. I'm going to add another piece of floss, which is fine. And I just leave the little, the little ends out like that. It's a zombie doll, so I think it just adds something to the texture of the doll. It's what I call a cute knot. There's cute knots and ugly knots. The ugly knots I hide on the inside, the cute knots I leave on the outside. Okay, now when we are to this last section here, <clears throat> it's really not enough to do one more stitch, but you could, I suppose, do one more stitch. Grab the bar, I mean the loop. And then grab the slanted bar here, pull, then come up through the bottom near that same space, and then tie a knot. And for this, we're going to hide the end inside the doll. So I'm going to poke the needle into his head near where that knot is at, and then come out the back somewhere. Pull it tight just a little bit and then clip and that'll hide the little stray end inside his head. His cloak. Let's put the horse together. So the horse is mainly put together the same way. There's a couple of small differences but we are going to start right about here just like we did on the rider. Start in between, because this is what I call the ugly knot, so we want to hide the ugly knot. Okay. Come back up from the bottom through both layers of felt, back up where we started here. Pull tight, but not, uh, pull taut, but not tight. Then go about a quarter of an inch away. 
Do it again, but this time grab the loop and then do that all the way around your horse until we get to about here. And then I'm gonna show you how we attach the tail and then the mane. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, when you get to about here, it's time to figure out where the tail and mane are gonna go before you go any further, and you're gonna need a couple of pins. So, I'm gonna take the tail piece and I'm gonna tuck it into the horse's rump, <laughs> right about where I want it, which is right about there. You, of course, don't have to attach it this way. You could make the horse's body and then you could attach this on the outside on the front afterwards. I like to have it tucked in between. And so I put it between the layers. I'm gonna pin it. So in theory, it doesn't move around too much. One pin through the tail on the front and one pin through the tail on the back, like that. Then we're gonna take the mane And we're gonna figure out where we want that, which is right about there, to sort of hold it in place. Then I'm going to blanket stitch up until, I have like one more stitch. <clears throat> till we hit the tail. Okay, then I'm going to come up through the back through the back piece of felt and the tail, up into the front, hopefully in about the same space. We're gonna switch from blanket stitch to back stitch right about here. Then I'm gonna go back about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna make sure I'm in line with the stitches on the back. I can pull this pin out so I can see better and you can see better. I'm gonna come up through the back about equal distance away from that first little stitch. Make sure I'm hitting the back piece of felt and the tail. And then go back over here where this first stitch started. Do, the, do it again. Constantly checking the back to make sure you're catching all your fabric and that you're about even, sort of in a semi-straight line on the front and the back. You'll end up with a row of stitches like that. We're gonna do one more. Okay, then we're gonna come up at the end of those back stitches through all the layers of felt and we're going to continue with our um, blanket stitches. So I just went around and I made a loop like we do at the beginning. This time I'm going to run the needle and thread underneath the loop and then again so that we'll have a straight bar. So we'll do this, grab the loop, and it'll be straight like that. I don't always make sure I do that. Sometimes I don't do that. Again, I do have an Etsy PDF download pattern for these basic shapes, which include the shapes for the horses, for the four horsemen, which weren't originally included, but I decided to add them at the last minute. So again, I'm gonna start from the back. I'm gonna make sure I'm grabbing the back felt, the main, oops, the back felt, the tip of the mane coming through the front, hopefully grabbing it all. The mane's a little more tricky than some of the other pieces <clears throat> because it's a smaller pattern piece and a smaller piece of fabric. So it's a little harder to make sure you grab everything. I'm gonna kind of do this and make sure, yeah, make sure you're grabbing at least a teeny tiny bit of the mane <clears throat> and the tail when you're doing the tail it's good to check but again you don't have to stitch them on this way you can you can stitch them on after just to the edge or you can put them on the top 
This is how I've chosen to do them. I poke myself. Okay, I'm gonna get this finished um, and attached and I'm gonna do just like I did with the tail at the end here. I'm gonna switch back to blanket stitch and I'm gonna stop about here. And then we'll stuff our horse and I'll be right back. Okay. So now we have um, him stitched and you can kind of, you know, tug on your tail and your mane, make sure they're attached well. <clears throat> We've got our opening so we can stuff him just like with the rider. I always stuff the extremities first, so I'll start with his back leg. I make quite a few of these little um, dolls and things right now, in case you haven't noticed on social media. <laughs> That's a joke, people. Um, so I keep a little tin on the table of stuffing rather than, than the entire giant bag. I find that that works better for me than having the giant bag of stuffing all over the place. So if you're going to make a few of these, you might think about doing something like that. Okay. I might just have enough thread on here to sew his neck closed, but I don't really think so, but we'll try. Okay, and there's our horse. Now we're not quite done yet because we've got to decorate our rider and or the horse. I'm not sure. I've only decorated one of the horses and that was for famine or pestilence. And I really thought he needed to have some flies on him like his rider. So I attached some flies and actually that one needs a little bit more glue. Um, so I attached some flies to him, which I really like the way that looks. So um, I'm not sure I'm going to do that to this one do anything to this horse. I haven't to the other two, but uh, first let's make his cloak. So we've got this fabric, which we need to get off of here. So we need to find an edge and cut a rectangle. There we go. This stuff is going to be a pain to work with if you use something like this. And you don't have to do this part, and there's no pattern for this part. You're just going to be eyeballing it. So, and literally, I'm just going to whack off a piece. Like that. So I'm going to, I think, do that. Do I want to do that? I might want to do that. So I'm going to cut. I folded the rectangle in half. And I'm going to cut up the middle. I feel like above the side like that. This is cheap stuff, so if I mess it up, it doesn't matter. Like literally, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I think some of this needs to come off, but I have an idea. Okay, so I'm gonna take some, I think we're gonna go ahead and use the black. I probably should use a dark gray. I'm going to use the black, but I'm just going to use like two strands. What is this? Two or three? This is three. I'll just going to, I'm just going to do that. Put a knot in the end. I'm going to just put a couple of stitches 
to hold the side of this closed. So I'm going to put my needle, once I put it through the fabric, this is very open weave, right? So there's nothing for the knot to grab onto. So I'm going to put my needle through a couple of the strands just above the knot so that when I pull, it's going to hold tight like that. And I'm probably, that holds the mesh fabric together right there. And then I'm going to take a little stitch in his, just um, at the very edge of his arm. Like that. So generally when I am decorating the dolls, I usually do it this way with stitches. The only things I ever glue on are sometimes the eyeballs and the flies. The flies, um, there's no way to stitch the flies on. You have to glue them down. Now these props for the dolls I made out of plastic bones, plastic flies, copper metal. There's no pattern for those. <clears throat> so. Um, you can make them out of what you have. Now is again a good time of year to buy like the plastic bones and things if you're going to make something like this. I usually keep stocks of them around. All right, so we have some pla more plastic flies. See? Got my E6000. This happens to be white E6000. Um, I'm using it because I got it um, inexpensively at um, actually the thrift I found it at the thrift store yeah. all right so before we do our flies though I'm gonna attach the labels so <clears throat> you wanna this is again this um, June Taylor printer fabric and it's on a paper backing so I always scratch the backing with something sort of semi-sharp and then peel it off. I don't have the edges of these labels. You could. Um, sometimes I hand write the labels on just a piece of muslin which is also fine, you can do that too. Which works. We're gonna take a little bit of our Elmer's glue stick. And I, I don't know why, but I just like to tuck this top edge 
in just a little bit. I don't have, I don't bother to do this to the sides. I just do it to the top and bottom. So I don't I don't know what the deal is with that. But I did all the other ones this way, so I might as well do death this way too. And so you have like that. And one will get attached to the back of the horse. And one will get attached to the back of our rider. Now I will have a, tell you a tip. I take sometimes I just take muslin fabric. This is muslin bandage fabric, but anyway, and I put some packing tape on the back because that enables me to very easily write on the fabric with a Sharpie and then I'll cut out my little label and I'll sew that to the back of the doll. So I do do that sometimes. So there is our horse. Here's our rider. I do think he needs some flies. I usually have a scrap of paper around here somewhere, which I can't find. Oh, let's use this in case the glue gets drippy. These plastic flies um, I got from um, Amazon. They're just miniature plastic house flies. <laughs> so. You, if you used clear glue, this would probably be a little easier for you rather than the white glue. My glue, as I've said, is white, so you know. All right, let me clean up and I'll be right back. Okay, can you see all of those in camera? The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I love the way they turned out. It was a project I was joking about at the beginning of 2020 when the pandemic and everything else started and the more stuff that happened this year, <laughs> the more I thought I just felt like it was therapy for me. I needed to make them along with Miss Coronavirus and Mr. TP shortage and all the rest of the zombie dolls. Um, I have been posting most of them on social media, so um, you can follow me over on Instagram and um, go back through my feed and see all the dolls. Um, I have gotten offers and uh, questions if they're for sale. At this time, I don't think they are, but if you would like your own set, I would take questions about doing commissions, especially if you want them customized. However, I will tell you right now, although I don't have a definite dollar um, point in mind, they wouldn't be inexpensive. They do take a fair amount of work to make. So if you're interested, email me, we'll have a chat. My email's in the description, okay. That being said, here you go. Here's my collection. I hope you make some and you have fun with this, whether you make the Four Horsemen or you make uh, just a generic zombie doll or maybe you make some Day of the Dead dolls. I would love to see what you make. Tag me in your posts on social media because I'd love to see them. All right, that's it for now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Support your free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups how you can. I and all your other favorite creatives have ways to do that, whether it's an Etsy shop or a PayPal tip jar or Patreon or something. Um, it's usually listed in the description. Mine is. Um, there's a link tree list of links for me in the video description. And when you click on it, you're going to find all the different places I am on the internet. A lot of people have their links down there in the video description uh, for support. But if you can't find what you're looking for, message them and ask. They probably have one and for some reason it's just not down there. All right, that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.